Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second tutorial of the Genomics to Proteins or G2P portal, which is a discovery portal to link genetic screening outputs to protein sequence and structure. In the first tutorial, we covered how to view and download pre-mapped genetic data on protein sequence and structure by searching for the gene of interest or protein name in this search bar. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate how users can map their own set of mutations or scores from the gene of interest to the three-dimensional structure of the protein. To access this capability, hit the interactive mapping menu on the menu bar. For secure uploading, mapping, and downloading of your data, you will need to continue using your Gmail account. Users can perform interactive mapping starting with the gene or protein identifier or by uploading their own structure. Let's explore the first option. Inside this module, you will find a navigation bar with menus corresponding to different inputs that you can give. Starting from the protein sequence, you can input protein structure, variations or mutations, scores which can be quantitative values per protein residue, features which can be discrete values per protein residue, or you may also enter all annotations, mutations, scores, features at the same time using multiple annotations option. Let's start with the sequence. You may either give a gene name or an uniprot identifier. I will go for the sample gene listed here, CDKL5. Then hit load. The portal will query proteins API to fetch the protein sequence. Then hit next. You can now select a structure of the protein either an experimentally solved structure from the protein data bank or a predicted structure from the AlphaFold database. I will select the experimental structure and will hit load. Scroll down on the page and you will find that the 3D structure has been loaded. On top of the structure viewer, you will also find the amino acid residues corresponding to the sequence and structure. The gray colored residues indicate that this segment of the protein is not present in the structure, while the cyan colored residues indicate that these residues are present. You can see this on the structure by clicking the row header. We will now scroll up and hit the next button. Here you will find the intake form for variations. The G2P portal accepts three formats of mutations. Three letter codes for amino acids along with the positions of mutations on the sequence, the AGVSP format for missense mutations, or the single letter codes for amino acids. Hit load. You will see that the mutation data provided in the input form are mapped on the sequence. For example, glycine at position 22 is mutated to glutamic acid. At this point, I will skip mapping this data on the structure and we'll do that at the end. So I will hit next. Here you can input any quantitative score Per residue. Similar to the mutations intake form, you will need to provide the residues positions in the sequence and the scores. Note that you may input multiple scores in different columns separated by comma or tab. For example, we have two dummy scores as input here, some sort of hotspot scores and conservation score. I will hit load and the input annotations will be mapped on the sequence. Let's hit next. In this features option, you will be able to input discrete value annotation per residue. For example, hit the sample format and you will see 
that multiple segments of protein sequence is annotated with domains and secondary structure information. I will click on load and the input annotations will be mapped on the sequence. Next, using the multiple annotations option, I can load all the three different types of annotations and can map them on the sequence. Now, we will map all the annotations which so far have been mapped only on the sequence on structure. I will click on benign mutations to map benign mutations on structure. Any mutation will be visualized in 3D as spheres. To change the color of a mutation type, click on the color selection palette and select your desired color. I will go for blue for benign mutations. In the similar way, I will also change the color for the de novo mutations and will select orange for it. Note that you can concurrently visualize multiple types of annotations on structure. Here I have mapped both de novo mutations and benign mutations on structure. For the positions with overlapping type of mutations, the color will correspond to the latest type you have selected. So if I map first the benign mutations and then the pathogenic ones, I will see red on the positions with overlapping benign and pathogenic mutations. While the mutations are mapped as spheres, scores are mapped as a spectrum of color on the structure. For example, I can map the hotspot score using a spectrum of purplish color from the color selection palette. Here, the lighter color will represent lower values and darker colors will represent higher values. Finally, the annotations of discrete features is mapped using single discrete color par feature. For example, we had two discrete values in the domain column ATP binding region and protein kinase. I want to see ATP binding region in yellow and protein kinase in cyan. I'll hit done. And you will see the annotations on the structure in your desired color. After mapping a score or a feature, on the cartoon of the structure, you can also overlay the mutation data, such as here, I'm mapping the de novo mutation back again to see on which feature or in which range of scores your set of mutations fall in. Last but not the least, you may download this annotation by clicking on this download icon on the top right corner of the mapping viewer. The downloaded file is PyMol compatible so that you may perform a downstream investigation of the mapping for your own research. You can also take a snapshot from the G2P portal itself. So let's track down the file that we just downloaded and open it directly using PyMol. To the right side of the PyMol, you will see the annotations that you just gave as inputs to the G2P portal is saved for your downstream investigation. 
I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. To find more details about the G2P portal, visit the About and Documentation page. You can also send us feedback or ask any question using this feedback form. For more tutorials and case studies, stay tuned to the G2P portal YouTube channel. Thank you.